This is Emma Borden's room. When their mother died, Emma promised to look after Lizzie. Emma testified and swore Lizzie was innocent. While Emma was visiting Lizzie in jail, they were overheard having an argument. Lizzie said, Emma, you have gave me away, haven't you? After she was released, they lived together at their new house. Until 13 years after the murders, when Emma moved out, they never saw each other again. Emma died nine days after Lizzie. Thinking back to the time my husband was out of town, and my cameras alerted me to a person at my patio door at 11.11 11 p.m., I was in bed, and the baby was in her crib. Um, this is inside my house. What the fork? Watch the background closely. Someone sent me this vid years ago. They thought they were home alone. IGF and I were hiking in the woods in Utah and found this random door in the side of the mountain. Can you come in here and assist the doctor? The door, the door, the door, the door's moving. Holy sh! Yes! Are you kidding me? This man behind me is deaf, and he was recording a video to send to one of his friends. When he sent it, his friend noticed something running in the background. I'm gonna roll the clip right now. Today I'll be telling you why you should never sleep in a double bed. And if you do, never sleep on just one side. As legend has it, if you fall asleep only on one side of a double bed, you will start to feel somebody creep around your room. The first night this happens, the thing will lay next to your bed and you will just hear heavy breathing. The next night, it will lie down next to you on your bed. You will hear its deep breathing and you will feel its breath on your neck. If you allow this to continue, you will wake up with your bed shaking in the middle of the night. The thing will start jumping on your bed, but whatever you do, don't let it know you're awake. If it thinks you're awake, it will begin to scratch out your eyes and then afterwards suffocate you to death. And that is why you should never sleep in a double bed. Hi, my name is Becky Loker, and I'm the owner of the Stone Lion Inn Bed and Breakfast. I want to welcome you. Um, how do you like this table? This is an embalming table. This house used to be a mortuary. It was a mortuary for about 10 years in the 1920s or 30s. And we have no idea how many people have been laid to rest on this table. Which may be the reason why people in this town have always thought that the Stone Lion Inn was haunted. This old man said to his nurse haunted her for years. At a Florida retirement community, there's an old lady who's really social. She loves going door to door and visiting all the residents. Everyone always knows she's coming because they can hear her cane tapping along the wooden floors as she travels the hallways. Sadly, the old woman eventually died, and a few days later, an old man moved into her room. The first two nights the man stays at the retirement facility, he calls the nurse's station repeatedly, complaining that there's an old lady in his bathroom staring at him through the crack in the door. The nurses reassure him that he's all alone and finally coerce him back to bed. On the third night, the man once again calls the nurse's station complaining about an old lady in his bathroom, but this time he adds, whoever it is, I wish she would just stay out of my room. I can't fall asleep because she won't stop tapping that damn cane. This is how you can tell that you have a portal in your house. If you point your camera to it and it looks like heat leaving pavement on a hot day or just kind of like ripply lines, then you have an open portal. I have three in my house, but I'm working with God to get those closed and the activity has went down tremendously. It's because we went down to the basement and throw me. Totally throw me. That paper's they thick, aren't they? Wallpaper in here is like good quality wallpaper. Yeah, I will say that. Yeah. So, but yeah, you can see it goes up again. Hey, wait up. Hello?
Hello? It was like this. <coughs> yeah. That sort of noise. I'm right, we'll have to watch this back. Right, so we just look back at the footage and there's definitely somebody at the top of those stairs, 100%. We've had a good look round and I don't know where they could have gone. They can't fit through the hole where them trees. I've only got 10 seconds to describe the video you're gonna see. It's Ed Warren, who's a demonologist, explaining what reptilian aliens are. He says they're from another world. No, they're demons from hell. Just watch this. Ghost lights were shooting all over the place and a deep, harsh, growling voice occurred in that room. He's seen what he described as a lizard-like creature. Now, as a demonologist, I have seen diabolical. In fact, at one time, I had seen 43 of them. I knew exactly what he was talking about. It's something that you can't describe to anybody. It's something that's from another world. Mm -hmm. And as he described that, uh, you could see the terror in this man's face. He wasn't used to these types of things. And the same thing happened to him again in a hotel room in Florida with a rabbi. Mm -hmm. the both if you have a chair in your room, listen to me right now. This video is for you. Always leave the chair full or tucked in, otherwise you're inviting someone to sit at night time. Okay, so quick story time. I used to have my bed in the middle of my window, so I had two spaces on my right side and on my left. I used to have my chair on the right side and I never covered it. It never had nothing on it. It was just there. Tell me why. One night, I don't know if it was sleep paralysis or what the fuck it was this lady was sitting on my chair and she was reaching her hand out to me calling my name leia leia tell me why my dumb ass was reaching for her hand before i literally touched her hand i woke up and i was so scared i was like what the fuck she was trying to take me with her like what i was like how the fuck this bitch know my name since then i started covering my chair i am in a haunted hospital right now apparently there's a ton of stories here and uh, creepy things that have happened. And then I find this room. I did not even see this room until I walked into it. But this is where they kept all the CPR dummies. They're not even dummies, they're just CPR training stuff. These are actually CPR things to try on IVs. If you look, you can see some of the medical tape here. I don't know why this is sprinted red. Feels this is the most attention I've gotten in a long time. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But look at this. They're freaking kids. Look how creepy that is. And then this guy scared the hell out of me. I actually put him somewhere else. Uh, like. Paranormal Disneyland Stories, part two. This one even has video surveillance. One park guest went to ride Space Mountain by himself. He started making conversation with the redheaded stranger in line next to him. The man was nice, but appeared a little off because he wasn't really up to date with some of the recent changes Disneyland had made. They were seated on the ride next to each other and the roller coaster started. The park guest enjoyed the ride, but at the end when the lights flashed, the redheaded man disappeared. He spoke with the cast member about it and they told him he was the only one in that row. That guest might have just had an encounter with a ghost nicknamed Mr. One Way. People say he interacts with guests in the line, rides with single riders, and even has appearances in the cast locker room. Surveillance footage even picked up some strange images that might be evidence of Mr. One Way. The story behind this creepy painting is guaranteed to scare you. It was painted by a man named Charles Scudder, he's pictured right here, and it was painted at the notorious Corpsewood Manor in Georgia. In 1982, Charles and his partner Joe were killed by these two men while they were in their house, and they decorated their home with loads of satanic paraphernalia and other occult objects, including creepy paintings like this one and this one. And now back to this creepy painting. In the months before the murders, Charles painted a self-portrait after his partner Joe had a bad nightmare where he was murdered. In the portrait, Charles sits gagged, bound, and he has five bullet wounds in his head. 
And that is exactly how he would go on to die in Corpsewood Manor just a short time after he painted the painting. Bound, gagged, and shot five times in the head. If you want to hear the full story of the Corpsewood Manor murders, the bizarre things that happened in that house in the woods, and the ghost stories that surround the property, to this day, go listen to the newest episode of Murder in America, the podcast that I co-host with my fiancée.